Welcome, everyone, to Star Trek Voyager Elite Force. Uh, a first-person shooter created by Raven, the same people that bought you such classics as uh, Star Wars Jedi Outcast. Uh, so this is a first-person shooter set... Uh, Set on uh, the starship Voyager, uh, it, it's a bit iffy when exactly this game takes place uh, in Voyager's actual continuity. Uh, but I've heard some say it uh, takes place near the end of Season 6. Uh, well, according to various things. Alright, so here we've got... Uh, We've also got the uh, expansion pack installed, uh, titled Star Trek Voyager Elite Force Expansion Pack, which means we have the virtual Voyager mode where we can just explore the ship ourselves, as well as Jerry Ryan reprising her voice as Seven of Nine. Is that the right way to say that? Should be reprising her role. But in any case, I, uh, I I don't really know what uh, spurred me on to just play this game. I just uh, felt like it all of a sudden. So here we are. Uh, let's take a quick look at... Can... <laughs> sure, sure. Well, I did have to... Uh... Well, look, it, it says a... 640 by 480 there, but I'm not running it in 640 by 480. I'm running it in a custom resolution. Uh, it's the only way to make the game look good on this monitor. And surprisingly, it really does work well. It doesn't look especially stretched or anything. Uh, some of the uh, cutscenes are a bit stretched, uh, but you'll probably hardly notice that. I did at least. Okay, uh, the, the cutscenes themselves may be a bit loud, but uh, I can't... <laughs> I, I've got to have the voice volume all the way up there and the others all the way down there. Uh, so I can't change the uh, volume of the cutscenes right now. Uh, we'll see what it's like when we actually get in there. Uh, first of all, why don't we meet the Elite Force? Or, and the senior staff? Just, I'll just Captain quickly Catherine scroll through Janeway. these, in case anyone wants to take a look. Commander Chakotay. I swear, some of this font does look a bit Lieutenant hard Commander to read. Tuvok. Lieutenant Belana Torres. Uh, among, uh... Ensign Tom Paris. Star Trek Voyager isn't my favourite series. Emergency medical hologram. Nah, that uh, belongs nine. to the next generation for me. Neelix. <laughs> and over to the Hazard Team Alpha Squad. Lieutenant Les Foster. Les Foster. LFT. Hmm. Ensign Alexander Monroe. Ah. Uh, Ah, ha, ha, ha. Ensign Monroe can either be a man or a woman, depending on your choice. It's either Alexander or Alexandria. Crewman Austin Chang. Crewman Rick Beesman. Okay. Crewman Telsia Murphy. Crewman Chell. Ha, <laughs> Chell. I'll never forget. He was actually uh, in one of the Voyager episodes, at least one of them, as I recall. <laughs> uh, yeah, I believe it's got the same guy playing him here, which is amusing. Crewman Perfecto Oviedo. His name is Perfecto Oviedo, okay. Perfecto Oviedo. Man. Crewman Ken Lathrop. What, what kind of parents must you have to Crewman Tom have Odell. their child named Perfecto? Crewman Mitch Satlos. Crewman Michael Jaworski. So, this game Crewman is... Crewman Elizabeth Notable Laird. for, while it's uh, a fairly old shooter, and it runs on the Quake 3 engine, it involves friendly NPCs with quite a lot of the gameplay. 
which hardly any other game did right then. I mean, uh, games like Half-Life may have had a few NPCs that helped you, but they weren't nowhere near as involved as they are in this. So, let's see, we get to choose our difficulty here. Uh, makes that thing pulse faster. We'll play on challenging. And we'll pick uh, a male Alexander Munro. <laughs> because it's, well, canon, according to Elite Force 2. You don't get gender selection in Elite Force 2, which is a bit sad, but... <laughs> Considering how they handled certain things in this ca in this game, uh, well, I'll uh, I'll go over that as we get to it. All right. Without further ado, uh, let's let's view the tutorial. Just uh, to Monroe, refresh ourselves. The purpose of this training course is to familiarize you with the basic maneuvers and strategies you will need as a member of the Hazard Team. On away missions, you will be required to know instinctively exactly what to do in various situations. First, you should warm up. Walk or run around the room a few times. Practice maneuverability. Your hazard suit is designed for ease of movement while affording you a significant amount of personal protection. These suits are armored and outfitted with a medical system powered by a small belt-mounted energy pack. This pack has a universal power collector which can accept most types of power as energy. It was designed for maximum flexibility in the field. Now let's try some basic movement maneuvers. Ah, good old animations. First, approach the ladder. Then, look up the ladder while walking forward to climb. Wow, I was afraid he would never stop talking. Okay, Tuvok uh, in the tutorial is a bit quiet. He, uh, he gets a bit louder once we actually start the main now game. Need to jump on, over, and around these obstacles to get out of the pit. Yep, yes, we can certainly Very jump. Good. We're a first person shooter protagonist. To maintenance shaft, then crouch to crawl inside it. We'll have to be doing this more than once. Although, surprisingly, not that often, considering. You will encounter life threatening environments. Life threatening environments. On your tactical eye display, or TED, you will notice the orange bar and numbers in the lower left of your view. Yeah, uh, funny thing, this kind of environment does never actually appear in the game. It, it does appear in Elite Force 2. It's funny, though. However, once the armor is depleted, you will take more damage, and your health energy will drain very quickly. Your mm -hmm. suit will protect you, but the energy for the health and armor systems will eventually drain, and will need to be replenished. Jump across these rocks to get to the other side of the lava pit, without losing too much health and armor power. Man, he really does love explaining everything in minute detail. Don't worry, that steam doesn't hurt us. Okay, it does. <laughs> In the cave is an alien power Eat my words, why don't I? To help and armor energy. Your TED has been programmed to scan and identify usable power terminals in many alien configurations. It's amazing how well we can hear his voice when he's only over there. Oh, way over there. <laughs> well, it is just the holodeck after all. Your suit's medical system is recharging while nanites are recharging. Chat is in here now. You will now have to use all of the skills you have just learned to get through this next area. Beware of enemies and dodge their fire. Oh yeah, dodging is easy, I tell you. Hmm. What's through here? Uh, let's go this way. Hmm. Just jump up here, yep. Oh, well, this is the way we were supposed to go, and there's Klingons. Thankfully, they did not get a single shot on us. You are now equipped with a standard Federation phaser compression rifle. On the lower right of your view, I, I don't really like the look of the compression rifle in this one. I like it better in the second one. I, I'm going to be saying that a lot about things in this game. <laughs> 
Alright, so we've got primary fire and secondary fire. The secondary fire can uh, disintegrate targets and it does uh, about double damage, I think. Uses up uh, double at the ammunition, of course. Oh yes, magnification! We can actually shoot the targets while they're down there, funnily enough. But we won't need to. Whoa. Ah. You cannot be truly hurt here. Try again. <laughs> Try again. I uh, what I did was I moved uh well I <laughs> I moved off while uh, the bar the railing here went so that uh, this platform could uh, come up anyway. This next exercise is a simulated firefight. Perfect. Primary objective is to eliminate Get that all scavenger rifle. Enemies. You will need to use your rifle and recharge it, utilizing energy terminals like the one you just used. When you receive a new mission objective, it will be uploaded to your TED. Mm -hmm. Mission objectives. Ah, also tactile information. The Herogen are a hunting civilization who work primarily in packs, constantly searching for new prey. Huh. Like predators. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this scavenger rifle uses uh, different ammunition to the Federation weapons. Dilithium crystal shards. This is thing, huh? Oh, oh boy! Okay, the erosion's here. <laughs> All right. Well, this, according to various logs found in Virtual Voyager mode, this is nothing compared to what the Hazard team really goes through in training. It would have been nice to see what they really do go through in training. Congratulations, Ensign. Huh. You have successfully completed the Hazard team training course. <laughs> that was it. That was it. Welcome to Voyager uh, menu system. All right, let's get started on the actual game now. I just wanted to show that off because I want to show the whole game off. So, I'll let Captain Jane do the speaking. The USS Voyager was transported beyond our control, seventy thousand light years across the galaxy to the Delta Quadrant. There, without aid from Starfleet, we began our seventy-year journey home. In our numerous encounters, we came into contact with many dangerous and violent species. Having a limited crew with no chance of reinforcements, we determined that we needed a specialized team to handle the more dangerous situations. Tuvok, Voyager's chief of security, assembled an elite force of security personnel named the Hazard Team. Ensign Monroe is second in command of this uniquely trained team. Equipped with Seven of Nine's experimental anti-Borg weapon, the Infinity Modulator, the Hazard Team has beamed to a Borg cube on a dangerous mission. However, the team was quickly overwhelmed, and the I-Mod is now in the hands of the Borg. Separated from the rest, Monroe is attempting to rescue the team. They're Borg. Uh, don't try to understand them too much. Also, one moment. I uh, did put the. Uh... Ensign, I've uploaded your mission objectives and tactical information. Review it now before proceeding. Okay, Tuvok. 
Uh, let's see. Rescue your teammates. Reclaim the eye mod from the Borg. Let's uh, check the tactical information. Uh, shooting and destroying Borg distribution nodes will deactivate green force fields and also Borg enemies nearby. We'll have to remember that we will need to use that. Borg enemies will doubt your weapons and create full body shielding, making your weapons useless against them. Only engage in combat if absolutely necessary. The new I mod weapon was specifically designed to penetrate Borg body shields. This is the best weapon to use against the Borg since they cannot ad <coughs> adapt to it. Uh, so, let's see what the Borg are up to, eh? Well, nothing we should butt in on, actually, because as far as we leave them alone, they will mostly leave us alone. Unfortunately, we need to get through this force field, and there's a distribution node right there. Thankfully, that's at least going to shut them down. There's no other way. Alright, so all we've got right now is the phaser and the compression rifle. No eye mod. But, uh, hey. Good. Yep, they're down. Let's, uh, let's make sure they stay down for a while, shall we? So, on the phaser here, we've got the standard firing mode and the second firing mode. I, mean, I think it's always better to use the second firing mode, just because it disintegrates enemies and it uh, does more damage, and you'll, you'll usually need more damage, more than uh, just the weaker thing. Yeah. Oh, they, they, don't, they don't die when you walk into them in this one, they do it in the sequel. That's just uh, something explosive. Okay, there's a plasma filter. We can blow that up and get through here to find a weapon energy terminal. But we don't need weapon energy right now because we're smart. Phaser has regenerating ammo, so we can use it as much as we like, as long as it's not against the Borg. Another disc node here. Okay, fine. I'll destroy that too. Come on, Munio. Ah. Let's just go this way. Nice and calm. Wow. I mean, <laughs> the, the Borg are kind of bipolar in their attitude at the moment. That's uh, not going to do anything. Hmm. Sure, we have a gander inside here. Yeah, they don't even care if their plasma filters are destroyed. Hmm. And they're supposed to be striving for perfection, huh? down here. Oh! Sorry! Oh, that's the console we saw earlier, I think. Ch poor guy. Ah, oh, well, uh, I'm, I'm sure his Borg friends will help him up at some point. Right now we need uh, to save our own friends. My savior. Get the on. It's, on the table. it's Beesman! Our trusty friend. Well, the eye mod's there. This Borg is working on it, but uh, we really need him gone. There we go. Oh. Oh. Okay. They really know we're here now. Ah, uh, now we just need to rescue the rest of our teammates. Excuse me. Ex what? Excuse me. Rick, what Monroe? <laughs> wow, you you can use anyone, but Monroe doesn't actually talk to them. It, it's a shame. There are so many things we have to say, Rick. So many things. Like, what, what, like, what's that dripping down? Oh no, he's leaking. Well, someone should see to him. But it's not going to be us. Alright, uh, I'm, I'm not going to use the compression rifle for a while, I think. Oh no! Ah. Okay, that's Mitch and Odell. Nope. Uh, we managed to save them. Uh, there will be quite a few moments in this game uh, where 
the lives of our teammates will be in our hands. And it is, well, it is quite important that we, well, I wouldn't say important, but why shouldn't we strive to uh, be the best second in command that we can be? And save everyone we can. Uh, last time I played, uh, just about everyone except Odell there died. <laughs> Which was a shame. But I know I can do it this time. Oh no, look. The Borg have adapted. Oh no. Ah. I, I don't want to become a Borg. If you get killed by Borg in this game. <laughs> hey, blue force field? I don't see a disno here. Have a special power source. Okay. Yes, it does. It's somewhere down there. Well, that's a plasma filter. But oh, actually, this whole thing is the power source. Yeah, see, it's uh, plugged in right there. <laughs> so we're going to use the plasma filters to blow it up. I'm with you if I had an eye mod, but uh, what say I stay here and hold down? Go ahead, beesman. I... I'm sure you'll do fine without me. Oh, no. The secondary fire for the iMod does pretty much exactly the same thing as the first fire. It's just slower and does double the damage. I'll take that. Wow, seems like he's enjoying himself. Hmm. All right, here we go. Oh. Oh. Whoa. Hey, the force field's down. Some board just beeped in and they're. Well, that's not good now, is it? Ah, uh, we're gonna have to re-save him at this rate. The Borg in this game have remembered that they can fire various projectiles, so it's, it's imperative that we uh, take them out as quickly as possible. Oh man. Alright, we're entering the new area. And I think that is where we're going to cut it for now. Uh, next time, we'll be completely healthy and we'll see to the health of the rest of our team. Oh man, for the first uh, outing for the Hazard team, this has not turned out very well, has it? Uh, maybe we could use more training after all. Such a shame. Also, I, another thing I don't really like about this game is how uh, weapons are pretty cut off from the bottom of the screen. <laughs> but, oh well. It's just a, just an aesthetic thing. All right, uh, next time, health, hopefully. Bye for now, everyone.